print. The last print was really rough on top, so that means the extruder wasn't extruding very well. And so I heated up the nozzle to 235 and then tried to retract. Or first I tried to extrude in this little knob here with skipping. So I looked at the filament and while it was in there, the filament was really squished uh, like right there, right over there. So that means it just wore out the filament trying to push it through. So you squeeze this here and then you pull really hard while the nozzle is heated to get it out. And when, you, when I pulled it out, the end looked like this, which means there's probably some still in there. There's a little bulge right here, which means that was probably the part in the tip, so I probably got all of it. So now I go to get these little uh, needles. They're actually acupuncture needles. And with the nozzle still heated, I come up here and I don't know if this is necessary, but we just put it in and out trying to clean out any of the plastic. It's hard to get it in the hole there. And press pop. So I got it in the hole and I can feel resistance pushing it in so there's still plastic in there. So I just keep pulling it out and then kind of scrape off any plastic that's on the needle. Stick it back in, pull it out. Yeah, there's a lot of resistance now. I see I got some stringies on there. So clean that out again. Watch out, don't poke yourself. These little needles are sharp. And just keep doing that until it comes out clean. And I did that about 10 times, but it still seemed to have resistance putting the needle in. I'm going to try to put it, I'm going to cut this filament off till it's where it's not got any extruder, like mashing from the extruder, and try to feed it in again. So just feel where the filament is straight again and doesn't have any flaws and then cut it at a slight angle. And then if this tip flared out again, cut it the other way. This one doesn't look flared out, but you can cut it this way. Just the tip. Just to get that little sharp, the folded over end off. So then, getting it through this a little tricky. This is the filament detector. You have to rotate it around sometimes. Now you see it go through there. Just poke it through there. Now it's going through there. Now you have to press this and push it through with your other hand. So I pushed it through about four inches and so now I can come back here. Normal speed. Try to extrude You can kind of feel it go in or not. Yeah, it's pulling in now. It's going in. So it hasn't reached the hot tip yet, so keep doing that. With the white, you can kind of see it go through the white. It go down. It's going down again. Press it again. 
keep doing that and see what if it oozes out the tip again. It should be reaching the hot nozzle. And if you, there it goes. So if you were to hit hear the extruder click, it means something's blocked in there, but this is coming out pretty well, so I think I cleared the nozzle or whatever was stopping the extrusion from happening. Now I'm going to retract five. I guess it has to finish extruding as much and then it's going to retract, which I didn't really want it to do, but I'll try to extrude again and see what happens. Okay, extrude. There it goes. Extrude five more. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, so I think we're ready for printing. You might want to level the bed again after this. So I'm not going to level the bed this time because I don't think I touched the bed, but I'm going to go back and print. Remember when you print, print from the local, not the USB, because sometimes USB has problems. You can copy it to the local from the USB, okay? So I'm going to print the 56 gear tooth. Now, before I hit print, I'm going to come over to the nozzle and I'm going to yank off all the extra and then touch the hot nozzle because you don't want that on in your bed. And there's still some more right there coming out. So I'm going to use the tweezers. Just take off some of that. Wait till it cools and then yank it off. It's kind of like a glue game. got to wait till it cools. And Otherwise, you just keep pulling more and more out if you pull it out right away. Just like this and make it fast. Okay, so now I come over here and print. And we'll see if the first layer works. So first it's going to test the bed level to get the right Z value. And we still got some sludge on the end, but it'll get rid of that. Uh oh. Oh good, it left. Alright, left a big old piece of junk on the end. Hopefully it won't pick that up again. This is called a skirt. It does a skirt around the object first if you tell it to in the slicer. And this gets rid of extra extruding material off the tip. Also defines where the object will be printed so you know it's not going off the sides or anything crazy. So it left a little gloop at the very beginning, but it looks like it's sticking well to the bed. There's a little bit of skipping on the first layer there. That's a little concerning. Maybe I should have leveled the bed. I meant do the automatic bed leveling. to this side. Yeah, see how it skipped a little on the first layer? Sometimes that problem takes care of itself if you let it go to the second layer. Just watch it. Sometimes it smooths it out. Yeah, it smoothed it out okay there. So maybe it was too far down and the nozzle couldn't squirt anything out on the first layer on those spaces that are kind of bumpy. We'll, we'll see what happens. The 
This is the 56 tooth gear. Takes three hours. So when you're copying from USB, you go to the USB tab and then click the three dots and it'll say copy to local and then you can select all the files to copy to the local sonic pad from the USB. And that seems to work without giving any errors in the G-code file, which I kept getting when I would print directly from the USB. Okay, yeah, see that? It fixed the little bumpy areas. So this one will probably work. Okay. So here is the mythical 56 tooth gear for LEGO compatibility and it does work. <laughs>